Good morning. Welcome to worship on the 20th Sunday after Pentecost. On behalf of American Lutheran Church, I welcome you this morning to our time of worship and fellowship. We extend a special welcome to all that are visiting with us this morning. Please know that is our hope that you feel at home with us in our worship and fellowship. The flowers on the altar are in memory of Dale Hagen, the brother-in-law to Mark and Emily Mueller. Dale's funeral was on Thursday. After worship today, all are invited to the fellowship hall for a time of coffee and conversation. Today's fellowship hour is hosted by the Prayer Shawl Committee. We ask that you keep the following people in your prayers this week. Cheryl Pauley, who is currently in the Millbank Hospital, Wade Frosch, Gordon Jarman, Dennis Brock, Shirley Thorson, Shirley Schultz, Ron Bierke, Ken Hallquist, Del Stangle, Ben Walford, and Katie Luch. Thank you to all those that are helping with worship this morning, and a special thanks to Brenda Moss for assisting minister. Nathan Corley is stepping up and helping with the acolyte. Mary Bjordahl, Lori Hardy, and the greeters and ushers. We'd like to extend a special thank you to Lexi Johnson, who is serving as our guest minister this morning. Lexi grew up on a beef farm with her parents and four siblings in Webster. She graduated from Augustana University with a degree in government and international affairs. She spent a year in Australia with the ELCA program, Young Adults in Global Mission. And Lexi is currently the program director for Lutheran Outdoors in South Dakota. Welcome, Lexi. Um, this is our moment to keep everybody informed with what's going on in the church. We have some announcements and then some special announcements as well. There will be a Halloween party for Sunday school children and their families next Sunday, October 29th at 4 p.m. You can wear your costumes. There will be games, food, and a movie. I have an announcement from the autumn evening. They're pleased to announce that it is a huge success. They were very blessed with nice weather and enjoyed a fun evening of fellowship, food, music, and fundraising. Thank you to all that donated, attended, purchased items, and helped make the evening a good time. Betty Tornis, do you have an announcement? This is the week. So Wednesday, we'll peel potatoes at 6. Anyone who feels like they'd like to have a little fellowship while you peel away, why, it won't take that long. We, we get done in a hurry. Uh, Thursday, we'll start at 10, and we'll mix the mixture. And that has to cool down. So Friday is our big Friday. And we'll fry all day. And if you can come for two hours, if you can come for the whole time, we'll start at nine. And I know we have to do this because we sold some at the party. So, so everybody, bring your aprons, bring your tools. Oh, and if you've seen these, these are the turners. And if you see that they're red, white, and blue, come to work with us and we'll tell you why. Oh. <laughs> it takes two to remember all those things. Uh, we would love to have young people come and help us, and there is no school. And Dana has offered to help babysit. If anybody would like to come and their kids could play while you roll or learn how to do something with LEFSA, so please just let us know if we need babysitting. We'd love to train new people to come and do this because this is an, an ancient art and we don't want it to die. So please come and help us. Thank you. I believe Heidi has an announcement as well.
Good morning. As many of you know, Katie Luch was in a serious car accident about a week and a half ago, and she's still in the hospital in Sioux Falls. And if you follow Marie on Facebook, she does a good daily update on how Katie's doing. The big thing is she can't have visitors right now. She still needs a lot of prayers. But Brenda Maz and I got together, and we are planning a fundraiser benefit for the family on Sunday, November 5th. It's going to be egg bakes and muffins and fruit and just a time of fellowship and raising money to help them defray costs of Katie being in the hospital. Um, there are sign-up sheets at the Welcome Center for people to donate egg bakes. Please bring them baked because we're going to be limited on oven space and so we can just have to keep them warm instead of try to bake some of them. And for muffins and for volunteer people to help work. We need people to help set up serve and then clean up. So those sheets are all at the Welcome Center. Um, also pass the word around the community for other people to come and join us. It's just not for the congregation because Katie has affected people all around this community. Um, she is a first year med student at USD also so she will have to do some rescheduling of schedules I believe um, to finish those studies. But um, keep the Luch family in your prayers and come join us on the 5th um, to help raise money for them. Thank you. Thank you, Heidi. Um, I think I just have one more thing, and I believe they're still taking congressional surveys out there in the box, so if you can please get those completed if you haven't done so, that would greatly help the call committee. Is there any other announcements? If not, we begin our worship with the confession and forgiveness Please stand. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, abounding in steadfast love toward us, healing the sick and raising the dead, showering us with every good gift. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Just and gracious God, we come to you for healing and life. Our sins hurt others and diminish us. We confess them to you. Our lives bear the scars of sin. We bring these also to you. Shower us with your mercy, O oh God. Bind up our wounds, forgive us our sins, and free us to love for the sake of Jesus Christ our Savior. Amen. The Apostle Paul assures us, when we were dead in our trespasses, God made us alive together with Christ, nailing the record of our sins to the cross. Jesus says to you, your sins are forgiven. Be at peace and tell everyone how much God has done for you. Amen. Please join in our gathering hymn for the beauty of the earth.
The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Let's join in the Kyrie. Lord, have mercy. Mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Please join in our hymn of praise. Glory to God. Holy God, our righteous judge, daily your mercy surprises us with everlasting forgiveness. Strengthen our hope in you and grant that all the peoples of the earth may find your glory in you. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. At this time, I invite the congregation to be seated, and if the children would come up to these front steps, that would be awesome. here. Come closer. Come on. Heaps of room. Come on, you can sit on this step up here too. Keep coming, keep coming. There's plenty of room. Awesome. You guys can come sit up here too if you want. Perfect. How are you guys doing this morning? Oh, I couldn't hear you. How are you guys doing this morning? Oh, fantastic. Now, in our gospel message that we are going to read today, there are some certain people in our gospel that are trying to trick Jesus. Now, can you guys ever think of an example of somebody trying to trick you in your life? Has anybody ever tried to trick you? Yeah? We've got some? Do you have an example of it? Uh, no. No? No? Over here? Your brother? How did your brother try and trick you? Did he try to trick you to do something? Yeah? We've all been... Oh, Macy tricked me. Oh, Macy tricked you? Okay. (laughs) 
Any examples? That's siblings often do. I had four siblings myself, so I know that they try and trick you sometimes. Yes? My brother Mason tried to trick me a bunch of times. Okay. His brother Mason tried to trick him. How did your brother try and trick you? When he tried to trick me, I became a science lab man or a caveman and all. Oh, boy. But he never stopped doing it unless... I made him sit down on one chair. Oh my goodness, that is quite the convincing brother you've got. Now, have you ever been tried to be tricked, but you knew better than that? Yeah, I see some head nodding. We got some smart guys up here. I see some head nodding. Yeah, sometimes when people try and trick us, we can see through that, right? And we know that we're trying to be tricked. Yeah. Now, that's exactly what happens in our gospel message. These people are trying to trick Jesus, but do you think that Jesus can be tricked? No, and I hear some, no, no, no. That's right. Jesus isn't tricked. He sees through. So what they're trying to do is trick Jesus into saying something. So in this example, they have a coin. And when they show that coin, they ask Jesus who that coin should go to. Should it go to God? Or should it go to Caesar? So Caesar was the ruler of the government at that time. Yeah, but that's exactly what Jesus says. I hear some people that have heard this before. They say, give on to God what is God's. Do you think that God wants, what do you think matters more to God? You as a person or that coin? Us. That's exactly right. Jesus wants us, each and every single one of you. That's exactly right. Because he loves you, and he has chosen you to be his people. And always remember that, that you are what God wants. God doesn't want that coin. God wants you. And that's pretty awesome to know. He doesn't want to be rich. He wants to That's exactly right. God doesn't want to be rich with money. He wants to be rich with you and all that you guys have to offer. So let's join together in a word of prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, I thank you so much for the opportunity to be able to hear your word and for all of us to have that promise, to be able to remember that you love us exactly for who we are and that we are the ones that matter in your kingdom. That it's not about worldly things or money, but it's about us and us being chosen and promised. In your name we pray. Amen. Thank you guys. You guys can go ahead and go find a seat. A reading from Isaiah, the 45th chapter. Cyrus is my anointed king. I will take hold of his right hand. I give him the power to bring nations under his control. I will help him strip kings of their power to go to war against him. I break city gates open so he can go through them. I say to him, I will march ahead of you. I will make the mountains level. I will break down the bronze gates. I will cut through their heavy iron bars. I will give you treasures that are hidden away. I will give you riches that are stored up in secret places. Then you will know that I am the Lord. I am the God of Israel. I am sending for you by name. Cyrus, I am sending for you by name. I am doing it for the good of the family of Jacob. They are my servant. I am doing it for Israel. They are my chosen people. You don't know anything about me, but I'm giving you a title of honor. I am the Lord. There is no other Lord. I am the one and only God. You don't know anything about me, but I will make you strong. And then people will know there is no God but me. Everyone from where the sun rises in the east to where it sets in the west will know it. I am the Lord. There is no other Lord. I cause light to shine. I also create darkness. 
I bring good times. I also create hard times. I do all these things. I am the Lord. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. Psalm 96 will be read responsibly by full verse. Sing a new song to the Lord. All you people of the earth, sing it to the Lord. Sing to the Lord. Praise him. Day after day, tell about how he saves us. Tell the nations about his glory. Tell all people about the wonderful things he has done. The Lord is great. He is really worthy of praise. People should have respect for him as the greatest God of all. All the gods of the nations are like their statutes. They can't do anything. But the Lord made the heavens. Glory and majesty are all around him. Strength and glory can be seen in his temple. Praise the Lord, all you nations. Praise the Lord for his glory and strength. Praise the Lord for the glory that belongs to him. Bring an offering and come into the courtyards of his temple. Worship the Lord because of his beauty and holiness. All you people of the earth tremble when you are with him. The second reading is from 1 Thessalonians, the first chapter. I, Paul, am writing this letter. Silas and Timothy join me in writing. We are sending this letter to you, the members of the church in Thessalonica. You belong to God the Father and the Lord Christ Jesus. May grace and peace be given to you. We always thank God for all of you. We keep on praying for you. We remember you when we pray to our God and Father. Your work is produced by faith, by your faith. Your service is the result of your love. Your strength to continue comes from your hope in our Lord Jesus Christ. Brothers and sisters, you are loved by God. We know that he has chosen you. Our good news didn't come to you only in words. It came with power. It came with the Holy Spirit's help. He gave us complete faith in what we were preaching. You know how we lived among you for your good. We and the Lord were your examples, and you followed us. You welcomed our message even when you were suffering terribly. You welcomed it with the joy that the Holy Spirit gives. So you became a model to all the believers in the lands of Macedonia and, and Achaia. The Lord's message rang out from you. This was true not only in Macedonia and Achaia. Your faith in God has also become known everywhere. So we don't have to say anything about it. The believers themselves report the kind of welcome you gave us. They tell about how you turned away from statues of gods and you turn to serve the living and true God. They tell us about how you were waiting for his son to come from heaven. God raised him from the dead. He is Jesus. He saves us from God's anger. And his anger is sure to come. Word of God, word of life. Please stand for the gospel. According to Matthew, the 22nd chapter. The Pharisees went out. They made plans to trap Jesus with his own words. 
They sent their followers to him. They sent the Herodians with them. Teacher, they said, we know that you are a man of honor. You teach the way of God truthfully. You don't let others tell you what to do or say. You don't care how important they are. Tell us then, what do you think? Is it right to pay the royal tax to Caesar or not? But Jesus knew their evil plans. He said, You pretenders, why are you trying to trap me? Show me the coin people use for paying the tax. They brought him a silver coin. He asked them, Whose picture is this and whose words? Caesar's, they replied. Then he said to them, So give back to Caesar what belongs to Caesar, and give back to God what belongs to God. When they heard this, they were amazed. So they left him and went away. The word of the Lord. Please be seated. Grace and peace from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ be with all of you. It is such a pleasure to be here with you guys on this beautiful fall crisp morning. Um, Again, as Brian said this morning, um, just a little bit about me. I grew, worked. I work at NISADAC now as their program director, and I've worked there on summer staff about three years. And in between my time at Augie, yes, I did Young Adults and Global Mission in Australia. So if you guys have any other questions about NISADAC or camp or what Yegum is after church, feel free. I love talking about all of that. Um, but again, it is such a pleasure. Thank you guys for having me here today. Uh, out of curiosity... I would love if you guys would please raise your hand if you have ever seen the Christ hike out at Nisodak on the shores of Enemy Swim there. Has anybody here seen the Christ hike there? I see a few hands in the back. Awesome. For those of you who have not had the pleasure of seeing it, there is a scene where our actor as Christ plays out this story out of our gospel text. Christ is standing there at our green ball field there telling the disciples and the Pharisees to give unto God what is God's and give unto Caesar's what is Caesar's there. And whenever I hear the scripture, that's the first thing that always pops into my head is that story. Um, I also studied in Norway, and my first time I ever gave a children's message was at my congregation there when my pastor convinced me to give a children's message. I was only 19, and I had never done that before. And So whenever I think of the scripture, I think of the first time I was able to share that text with kids, and it means a lot to be able to share and dive into this text with you guys then here today as well. Um, Yeah, I often think that I wouldn't be standing here if it wasn't for that pastor in that congregation there, or camp itself, so thank you. Um, I hope for you guys as well then that this text might take you back to a story that you remember with your own family or your friends, whatever it may be, because It is a very powerful and beautiful text, and Christ is there in it so evidently with that promise for us. So in the opening to our gospel text, the Pharisees, as they often do throughout the Old, through the New Testament that we hear, are trying to trap Christ in his words, trying to get him to say something that he doesn't mean to say. And except Christ prevails in this, there's no trapping of Christ in this text or in any of the texts throughout the New Testament because Christ is exactly who he is. And we know that a person is justified, not by the works of the law, but through faith in Jesus Christ alone. And the law can never be Christ. Christ was not concerned of matters of this world, such as taxes and where this money was going. And of course, give Caesar your money, because it's not a concern to Christ. Your salvation is not found in Caesar or in any matter of this world. It is found in Christ alone. I'd also be curious then, has anybody, did anybody go to Nisodak in the year 2016? 2016, anybody? Okay, a few hands back there. The reason I ask is because I'm going to dive into then something new for you then as well, our summer theme from that year. As I was reading this text, I was taken back to that summer that I was working there. And our theme was, in it, not of it. And that's very much a hard to grasp, what does that mean, in it, not of it. But it very much speaks to our gospel text as well today. In my time working at Nisodak, that theme had been the hardest for me to try to internalize. The idea of in it, not of it. What does this even mean? 
and how can we possibly be in this world but not be of it? It means exactly what Christ is telling us. In our gospel text, give unto God your hope, your desire for peace, strength, love, trust, and faith. Where do you place your hope? When you wake up each day, what is it that motivates you to get out of bed and start your day? What is it that gives life to the breath that you breathe? When our hope is placed in this world, we are then of this world. By this I mean, if your hope is, for example, in your football team, winning the next game or the Super Bowl, that hope will only last for as long as your team is playing on ESPN. If your motivation to rise in the morning is Black Friday deals, where is your hope the other 364 days of the year? When the life you breathe is spent reading a magazine that is telling you how you are supposed to live your life, your hope is in the accuracy of that journalist who is selling you that article. Watch football, get the best deals, look out for your health, but do not place your hope in them. Remember who you have to thank for sports and health and technology and place your hope in him. When your hope is in Christ, peace is found. We've established that Christ gives us hope in each day, every moment, and every breath. When, he, when we have a constant source of hope, peace is present. Our heart, soul, and mind are at peace. This world is constantly trying to tell us where to place that hope because it is dependent on them for, our, for that source of hope. When you place your hope on teams or sales, you will never be at peace because your source of hope is controlled by this world selling it to you. Why chase this world when Christ is freely giving you the ultimate and constant source of peace? Place your hope not in your phone, your favorite newspaper, vehicles, sports, whatever it may be, and choose Christ. There is where peace is found. As Paul writes in the reading from Thessalonians, they tell how you turn to God from idols to serve the living and true God and to wait for his son from heaven, whom he raised from the dead, Jesus who rescues us from the coming wrath. Set aside your trust in worldly matters and give your, tra your trust and faith onto God. God wants that and he wants you. When our hope is placed in Christ, we find peace and we are stronger than we ever could be. At some point in your life, I'm sure that you have been told that you are not good enough, not strong enough for the team, smart enough for student of the month, not thin enough, whatever it may be. But God uses our weaknesses and turns them into strength. You are good enough. No disability can stop God. Think of Moses, terrified of speaking and incapable, but God proved him wrong. No stereotype on size will stop God. David should never have beat Goliath if that were the case. No ideas of possibilities deemed by age stops God. Some say Samuel was too young to be called as a prophet. Mary was only a teenager when she gave birth to a savior. No stigma of disabilities, size, or age can withstand God. God equips the called. Our strength is found, not in what this world tells us we need to reach for. It is in our faith of Christ. Again, God equips the called. It is in our weaknesses that God finds for perfection. Give unto God all of your weaknesses, and he will turn those into strengths. From 2 Corinthians 12, 9, My grace is sufficient for you, for my power is made perfect in weakness. Now that we know where to place our hope, when we have peace and strength in our abilities, meaning we are capable to share the word of God, when we pick up our cross, it is possible for those around us to see Christ through us, simply in our being. Showing the love of Christ is effortless when our hope, peace, and strength are in him. I worked at a congregation down in Sioux Falls as a youth director when I was a student at Augie. And one night I had the pleasure of teaching some sixth graders in their confirmation, why do we do service? One youth stood up and said, it, it is like a staircase, many people think. By doing service, they are climbing that staircase to heaven. But I know that is silly. Christ already came down the staircase. We do service so that through our actions, 
Others can see Christ through us. Christ is already here. My student was right. We don't do service to reach a closer relationship to God. Christ has already done that. We do service because our love for Christ is so strong that we cannot help but be moved to help our neighbor. The power of Christ fulfills our being. It is a knee-jerk reaction to show love to those around us. Hope, peace, strength, and love, they equal faith. Give unto God all that we are. When our hope is in Christ and not in the world that is trying to sell us what to be, we find peace and the strength in our own weakness. With ourselves being filled simply by being who we are, the love of Christ is shown in our words, gestures, smiles, and actions. Life gives us many opportunities to show our faith. It is up to us to utilize those moments. How can we look beyond this world? We are surrounded by ads, articles, billboards. It is impossible to escape the standards of this world. How do you tell youth, let alone ourselves, to see beyond it? It is not easy, but the most important part is that we do our best to try. We cannot escape it, but at the end of the day, at the end of our lives, it isn't about living off the grid or avoiding technology and society standards. I'm not telling you <clears throat> to throw your phones away, to stop reading your favorite magazine, or abandon your sports team. Rather, the contrary. We cannot escape this modern world, but we do not need to. We are in this world, but we are not of it. Our hope and peace and strength and love and faith do not come from this world. They come from Christ. When we live knowing that, we are in this world, but not of it. Christ came to us. We are justified through him. And, we live, and when we live by that, it becomes possible to not be conformed to this world because we have the promise. And as we heard from those kids just a few minutes ago, the promise always wins. We just need to remember to lift it all up to God. Give unto God what is God's. All glory to God. Amen. I invite all the third grade students to come forward at this time. Receive the gift of this Bible so that the story of God and God's people may be with you at home, church, or wherever you shall choose to carry it. Enjoy hearing the stories, how God is at work in the world and history. Learn about the life and teachings of Jesus. Be open to how God may continue to speak to you through your reading of the Bible stories. Receive this Bible. Hear God's word with us. Learn and tell its stories. Discover its mysteries. Honor its commandments. 
Rejoice in its good news. May God's life-giving word inspire you and make you wise. Blessed be your name, O Lord our God. You are the fount and source of every blessing. You have revealed yourself to your human creation in many and diverse ways. Our memory of your revelation is maintained and reverenced in the scriptures that we hold in our hands. Look with delight upon us today as we renew our commitment to read and remember you in the stories of our salvation. Help us to absorb its wisdom and live in its inspired truth. Encourage us with the help of the Holy Spirit to use these sacred writings for our prayer and inspiration, for the increase of our own faith and devotion, and for the building up of your kingdom. Through your word may be transformed into the very likeness of Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you forever and ever. Amen. Stand as we confess our faith using the Apostles' Creed. <clears throat> Living together in trust and hope, we confess our faith. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, and the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Open to the gifts of the Holy Spirit. We pray for the church, the world, and all of God's creation. Trusting in God, we pray for the church. Fill all worshipers with your Holy Spirit. Grant them generous hearts to share God's splendor revealed to them in Jesus Christ. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. We pray for creation, for the power of sun, wind, and water, for the riches buried in rock and soil, for the magnificence of life in forms too many to number. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. We pray for the nations, for leaders of governments, for fair commerce between nations, for treasurers, boards of directors, and all who justly distribute monetary resources. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. We pray for the poor and outcast, for those who cannot afford food, medicine, clothing, and shelter, for the communities and agencies who serve the needy and advocate on their behalf. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Trusting in God's healing power, we pray for this congregation, for the unemployed and overworked, for all who are burdened by debt, for the sick and those in particular need, especially those on our prayer list and those we name in our hearts. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. We give thanks for the saints of every time and place. By your spirit, grant us sure confidence in the everlasting glory you promise. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Into your trusting hands, gracious God, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting the power of Christ and the gifts of the Spirit. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you all. And also with you. Let us share God's peace with one another.
Let us pray. Praise and thanks to you, holy God, for by your word you made all things. You spoke light into darkness, called forth beauty from chaos, and brought life into being. For your word of life, O God, we give you thanks and praise. By your word you called your people, Israel, to tell of your wonderful gifts, freedom from captivity, water on the desert journey, a pathway home from exile, wisdom for life with you, for your word of life, O oh God. We give you thanks and praise. Through Jesus, your word made flesh, you speak to us and call us to witness forgiveness through the cross, life to those entombed by death, the way of yourself, giving love, for your word of life, O oh God, we give you thanks and praise. Send your spirit of truth, O oh God. Rekindle your gifts within us. Renew our faith. Increase our hope and deepen our love for the sake of a world in need. Faithful to your word, O oh God, draw near to all who call on you. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit, be honor and glory forever. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine upon you with grace and mercy. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Amen. We can join in our sending song, I Want to Walk as a Child of the Light.
Go in peace, serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.